In today's video, we are going to see about an entry and Azure Data Engineering project using Microsoft Fabric. So I have already uploaded an another NTN project video in this channel, and I hope everyone have watched it already. I have received multiple emails and messages from many of you asking that when I'll be uploading the next NTN project video. And that's the only reason I'm making this video. So this NTN project video is specifically done using Microsoft Fabric. This video is a special one because Microsoft Fabric is a recently launched tool. And since it has been launched, everyone is talking about it and it is trending everywhere. Also, it is believed that in the future, there will not be any Azure Data Engineering project without the use of Microsoft Fabric. So if you're someone who is looking to get into an Azure Data Engineering role, then understanding how Microsoft Fabric works is a must have skills. So for this reason, I've been thinking a while to create an end to end project video using Microsoft Fabric, since it will be very useful for you all. After many days of preparation, I have identified an use case and making this end to end project video only for you. I hope you find this video useful and please watch the video until the end. Okay, so now let's get started. Okay, so now let's see about the prerequisites for this NTN project. Firstly, I will clearly mention something here. Even if you are an absolute beginner, if you watch this video from start until the end, you'll be able to understand the full functionality of this project. You don't require a lot of skill sets to follow through for implementing it. Every topics will be covered as part of this project videos. But the only prerequisites for this project is you need to watch two videos. In my channel, I have already created a playlist specifically for Fabric where I have uploaded three videos so far. Among these three videos, you need to watch the first two videos before continuing with this project. Here, in the first video, you'll be learning about the introduction to Microsoft Fabric where you'll get the quick overview about the tool itself. And in the second video, you'll learn about how to create and configure Fabric in your environment. So these two videos are really important. Please watch these two videos and do all the steps mentioned in the second video in setting up the Fabric workspace in your environment. So this is the only prerequisites for this NTN project. Now let's see about the project overview. So in this project, we are going to implement a Bing News Data Analytics platform. I hope everyone knows about Bing. It is a search engine provided by Microsoft. So similar to how we have Google search engine provided by Google, if you go to the Microsoft Edge browser and use the default search engine, you'll be searching everything using the Bing search. So in this project, we'll be using the Bing search to ingest all the latest news data to the Fabric workspace and we'll be processing the news data and create a report out of it. Basically, we'll be creating a report in this project. You can consider this report as a kind of news dashboard where you can find all the latest news in a day and other analytics on this news data. So that's what we are going to implement in this NTN project. Most importantly, as mentioned earlier, we are going to implement this complete project using one tool called Microsoft Fabric. I think now you have a rough understanding about what we are going to do in this project. Now let's talk about the most important part of this project, which is the Bing search. So since we are ingesting the news data from the Bing search, this would be the data source for this NTN project. So in Azure, we have something called Bing API, where we can create and configure to use it as a data source and ingest any search data to the platform. So now let's discuss why I chose this Bing API as a data source for this project. APIs are one of the most important things when it comes to data engineering domain. In any data engineering project, there will be at least in one part will be assessing an API as a data source. So if you are a data engineer, it is really important for you to learn how API works and understand how to access and ingest data from it. So that's the reason I have used Bing API as a data source for this project. Okay, so we have seen about the data source. Now let's see about the architecture of this project. So firstly, we create and configure this Bing API in Azure, and then all the other functionalities that we are going to perform in this project is done entirely using Microsoft Fabric. So in this architecture, the first step would be as similar to any other data engineering project, which is data ingestion. 
So for doing this injection process, we are going to use a tool that exists within Fabric, which is called Data Factory. So one thing to note here is, this one is not Azure Data Factory. This is Data Factory, which is an inbuilt tool of Microsoft Fabric. I hope by this time, everyone have watched the prerequisite videos, and I think you understand what I'm talking about. Just a reminder, if you have not watched the two videos yet, I would highly recommend you to watch it. So coming back to the architecture, firstly, we'll be using Data Factory to connect to Bing API and copy all the latest news data to the Fabric workspace as a JSON file format. So whenever we work with the APIs, mostly we'll be dealing the data in JSON format. So that's the reason we are going to ingest the raw data as a JSON file as part of the data ingestion step. So now let's talk about where does this JSON file get saved in Fabric. So for this, we'll be using something called One Lake within Fabric. So One Lake is a one-stop storage solution for Microsoft Fabric, which is kind of similar to Azure Data Lake. In Fabric, we'll be storing everything in One Lake. So inside One Lake, we can create different kinds of databases, such as Lake Database, Data Warehouse, or Custo Database. So for this project, we'll be using Lake Database to store the raw JSON file. So to summarize this, as part of the data ingestion step, we'll be using Data Factory to connect to Bing API and ingest the latest news data as a JSON file format to the Lake Database, which is inside the one lake. So once the raw data gets stored in the Lake Database, we'll be processing the JSON data. In other words, we'll be transforming the JSON data into a proper table structure with a predefined schema. And this table will be stored as a delta table. So here, the process where we are transforming the raw JSON file to a structured delta table will be done using a tool called Synapse Data Engineering. So similar to Data Factory and One Lake, the Synapse Data Engineering tool is also part of Microsoft Fabric. So using this tool, we'll be creating Spark notebooks for transforming the raw JSON file to clean delta table. And this delta table will be stored in the lake database as well. Here, the only difference is, in the first stage, the raw data will be stored in the lake database as a file structure, whereas in the second stage, the data will be stored as a table structure, which is delta table. Okay, so now, in this data transformation part, I'm going to cover an important concept, which is incremental load. So in the first end-to-end -end project, I didn't cover the incremental load concept, and therefore many of you have asked me to create a project video by including the incremental load functionality. So this time, I'm implementing it in this end-to-end -end project. I hope everyone find it useful. So there are many ways to do this, but I'm going to show you one way which is more applicable to this specific use case. Okay, so now we are going to discuss about the most interesting thing about this NTN project. So by the end of this stage, we'll be already having a clean data that is stored in the lake database. So processing the raw data to the most curated form is one of the main work of a data engineer, right? So once the clean data is loaded to the database, this clean data can be accessed by anyone. Say for example, a data scientist for doing a machine learning work or a data analyst to do your reporting work. So one of the main idea of Microsoft Fabric is collaboration, which means that a data engineer, a data scientist, and a data analyst can work collaboratively using the different set of tools provided by a single framework called Microsoft Fabric. So for this reason, when doing an end-to-end project based on Fabric, I thought it is really important to think of a use case that includes the different aspects of data engineering, data science, and data analysis work. So what I mean by this is, so far we have seen a little bit of data engineering aspects in this project. And now we have a clean data in the lake database, which is ready to be consumed by a data analyst or a data scientist. Now as the next step of this project, we'll be taking this clean data from the lake database and perform a sentiment analysis using a text analytics machine learning model. So what I mean by sentiment analysis is, since the data that we are ingesting is the news data, each set of news will have a description about the news. So we'll be using this description 
to predict if the sentiment of the news is a positive one or a negative one or a neutral one using a machine learning model. So that's what we are going to do as part of the next step in this project. So once we use the clean data to predict the sentiment of the news, the data with the associated sentiment will be stored as a delta table as well. So for doing the sentiment analysis part, we'll be using a tool called Synapse Data Science. This is an another tool, which is also a part of Microsoft Fabric. Also one thing to note here is, if you're someone who doesn't know anything about data science, I would like to say it is completely fine. I'm not going to do a lot of data science stuff like creating a model from scratch, training the model or performing different types of statistical tests. Instead, I'm just going to use a pre-trained text analysis model to predict the sentiment of the news. The main idea of including data science part in this project is to get a full understanding of different tools provided by Microsoft Fabric and getting an understanding of how we can collaborate working with it which is really important to understand as a data engineer. Cool, so now the delta table with the sentiment predictions will also be stored in the lake database, similar to the previous step. So this data will be the final data, which will be used for creating the reports. By this time, we have seen some aspects of data engineer and the data scientist. Now it's time to see about the data analyst one. We'll be using the Power BI to create a news dashboard using the final data that we loaded into the lake database. Again, this Power BI is also within Microsoft Fabric. So using Power BI, we are going to create a basic dashboard, which can be used as a news report to monitor the latest news for the day. So once we create a dashboard in Power BI, we are going to use a new tool within Microsoft Fabric as part of this NTN project, which is called as Data Activator. So this Data Activator is a wonderful tool which is mainly used for alerting purpose. Say for example, let's say we'll be creating a dashboard in Power BI using multiple visuals. So using Data Activator, you can connect to Power BI data and set up an alert for any particular visual. So consider the same use case where we'll be predicting the sentiment of the news to positive, negative or neutral. Say for example, you are creating a visual based on the sentiment analysis. You can use the data activator to configure the alerts in the visual in such a way that whenever we receive a news with the sentiment as negative, then we need to trigger an alert. So this process can be exactly done using data activator. So we can also configure the data activator to send alerts via an email or the Microsoft Teams. In this project, we'll be configuring the alerts to go through Microsoft Teams. Okay, so this is the overall architecture of this project. I hope you understand what we are going to implement as part of this project. So basically this is a five step process, where in the first step, we'll be using data factory to connect to the Bing API and ingest all the latest news data to the lake database as a JSON file format. And then in the second step, we'll be using the Synapse data engineering tool to process the raw JSON file and transform it to a clean delta table. And then in the third step, we'll be using the Synapse data science tool to predict the sentiment of the ingested news data using a text analysis model and load the final data to the lake database. And then in the fourth step, we'll be using Power BI to create a news dashboard using the latest data. And finally, we'll be using the data activator tool to configure alerts in the Power BI visuals. So this is the overall architecture of this NTN project. And as mentioned earlier, we are going to implement this complete project using one resource called Microsoft Fabric. And most importantly, this project will cover the work of three data professionals, a data engineer, a data scientist, and a data analyst. So I have created this use case, keeping this in mind. So I hope this project video is useful to all of you. And finally, one thing I forgot to mention in this architecture, which is orchestration. So we'll be using Data Factory to create pipelines for orchestrating all the tasks that is mentioned in this architecture. So this one is a data engineer's responsibility to orchestrate everything right from the data ingestion, data transformation, machine learning, data loading, and until the data gets properly updated in the report. So everything will be connected end to end via pipelines 
And this is one of the main step that will be covered as part of this NTN project. Okay, so finally now we will see what is the agenda of this NTN project. Firstly, we'll be seeing about the environment setup. In that, we'll be starting with creating the required resources and other configurations needed for this project. And then we will start with the data ingestion. And after that, we'll be seeing about the data transformation along with the incremental load as discussed earlier. After that, we'll be seeing about the sentiment analysis. It also requires the incremental load process for loading the data to the lake database. So once this is finished, we'll be seeing about the data reporting using Power BI. And after that, we'll be building pipelines in data factory for orchestration. And then we'll be setting up alerts using data activator. And finally, we will finish this by doing an end-to-end -end testing. So this is the agenda for this project. So in this section, we have seen about the complete overview of the project. And in the next section, we will see about the environment setup.